Hi, it's Nick, and today we will be talking about the plants I am trashing in 2022. To preface this video, I am using the word trashing as a hyperbole. Not many people got that when I made the same video last year. I will be throwing none of these plants in the trash, or rather the compost, because I like to excuse all of my inexcusable behavior with said practice. Yes, officer, I did steamroll that group of people going through the crosswalk at 80 miles an hour. However, I have a plethora of green burial options. Besides my ethically blind but environmentally conscious felonies, I would like to say that most of these plants will end up on Craigslist or eBay. Need not worry, they will find new homes that may or may not kill them with a week of it arriving in their house. Before we move on to the greenery that I will be launching into the sun shortly, or so everyone thought last year because nobody understands nuance anymore, I will be sharing an anecdote. It may be scientific, it may be experiential, or it may be just thoughtful to help you make better decisions when choosing plants to bring into your life. I would love to help you bring better people in your life, but I haven't quite mastered that myself. Before I tell you why I'm going to be sending these plants into the stratosphere, I would like to announce my first sponsor ever. I am teaming up with Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world. I have the profound belief that learning a second language can open countless doors in your life. Work, travel, relationships. You can be on 90 Day Fiance. And next time you go to Cabo, you won't confuse squeezable mayonnaise for sunscreen. So why do I like Babbel? I've used the app for a couple weeks now, and it's just fun, it's convenient, it's much easier than learning a language via textbook. I haven't had a ton of time, but I'm pursuing French. Here are some quick phrases Babbel helped me put together. Il y a un planté chez moi. There is a plant in my house. Le terreau est humide. The soil is wet. C'est mon chat. This is my cat. Want to try Babbel with me? There's a link below for 60% off and a 20 day money back guarantee. Let's start out with this pubescent travesty. This is Hoya Lauterbachii, also known as Ariostema Lauterbachii. You know it's bad when the plants are using aliases to escape the domestic death traps that people in this community call their homes. They're like, hear me out. If I change my genus, nobody will care about me anymore. Purportedly, this plant produces the largest flowers of all Hoya. That is before the plant taxonomists ran out of things to do. According to Logies, each individual flower can be three inches across, or the entire umbel of flowers can be the size of a soccer ball. That is where I purchased it in 2020, unfortunately. Since then, it has grown and died, and grown and died. I don't really want it to continue this perpetual spiral of borderline existence. I also read an article by Doug Chamberlain, a longtime Hoya collector, and he said there's really no point in trying to grow this if you are north of the tropics, which is where this is from. May this be a forewarning to anyone charting circumpolar hinterlands, such as I. However, if you happen to live anywhere that's worth living, you may want to try this out. So what have I learned from this? That would be to find others in similar climates as you that have grown a certain plant. Don't let nurseries lead you into believing you can grow a Brazil nut tree in your closet. I do have to say that Logies is sometimes the culprit of this in the interest of provoking the boundaries of domestic horticulture. I'm just going to say there are a handful of things in their magazine that just take up too much space or require too much sun to be grown outside of a greenhouse or just outside. I'm going to tell you this right now, 90% of fruit trees need a lot of sun. A very large Ficus triangularis variegata that does not fit within the frame. It is very large. And gorgeous. I got this as a trending tropicals in 2020, like one of those little white six inch pots. It originally had two stems. I cut one off in order to make this more upright to save room. That's a good tip for anyone that's getting something that's kind of like shrubby and needs to save space. 
The reason I'm getting rid of this is because it literally drops half of its leaves every winter, which I believe is due to a lack of sunlight. Even though, theoretically, from a heliophysical perspective, photons could penetrate the silicate pane to which it is adjacent, in the winter there is generally no light penetrating the windows. Almost all of my plants drop their leaves in the winter. I'm fine with that, but this, this is a little bit too much. To add to that mess, this plant produces dozens of tiny spherical variegated figs that fall to the floor and roll God knows where. Right now, I think there are a few on a cross-country trip to see the world's largest rubber band ball. The figs usually come around December, ironically, but they are not good for figgy pudding. So what can we learn from this? Ficus triangularis, or at least Ficus triangularis variegata, has higher light needs than other figs. And in general, variegated plants are going to need more light than their non-variegated counterparts. If you're looking for a fig to just park in the corner of your living room, this is not it. I also forgot to mention there is a ginormous spider living inside of it. So apparently Ficus triangularis variegata attracts spiders. It's big for here, but not like, why did I go to Australia big? Hoya fichii. I've grown this a bit. I've had it for two years. I'm a little underwhelmed. The leaves are veiny, I guess. I guess this is the redeeming factor of said Hoya. I feel like a lot of people have raved about it. I also feel like this is another one of those Hoyas that wants more light and warmth than I can give it. I think a lot of people have a much lower threshold of cognitive excitation than I do. Lesson, don't buy plants because other people hype them up or because they're rare. This was rare at the time. Most of these were rare at the time. Hoya bilobata. Got this in 2020, hasn't done much for me, seems to be suffering from Areostema lauderbachii syndrome. It grows, it stops growing, it loses leaves, it sprouts leaves. This is just one roller coaster of a plant. Through an anatomical lens, I don't even think it's particularly compelling in its foliar composition. This was just collateral from a phase I was haphazardly collecting Hoyas without caring what they actually look like. The only thing that is interesting about this plant is that the leaves are incredibly hard. You cannot bend them whatsoever, and I fear if I did try and bend it, it would just snap in half. Lesson, don't collect plants just because you like other plants that they are related to. My incomparable but very comparable, Philodendron Rio. Funny story, I found a Peperomia Pink Lady plant at a nursery for $5. You know, picked it up, checked it out. I put up a picture on Reddit and said I was looking for some Peperomia watermelon leaves in exchange for the Peperomia Pink Lady leaves. People really liked it, and I ended up getting two cuttings of this for two leaves of a Peperomia Pink Lady. At the time, these were going for like $60 a leaf. And the cuttings, I think, had both two or three leaves on them. I'll take it. I was lucky. Since then, I have sold some single leaf cuttings of this. I have sold multiple leaf cuttings of this, anywhere from $60 to $120. Like NFTs, it's starting to fall off, so I'd like to squeeze a few more pennies out of it while I can. Lesson, if you see that your plant is devaluing, you may want to sell it and purchase it at Walmart two years later. My Hoya Crimson Princess with a fern that has kind of proliferated through the basket. I found this in 2020, like most of the other mistakes in this video. The word mistake reminds me of most of the videos that I made in 2020. This was a Costa Farm special that I found at Walmart outside in the sun, fried, and simultaneously drenched. Kind of like my blueberry bagel after my toaster caught on fire. The Walmart employees that day must have thought, this isn't a hanging basket. It must be a petunia. I can use motor oil on my waffles because it looks like maple syrup. 
This is the guy on one of those TLC specials making breakfast for his car. When I got this home, I realized a lot of it was reverted. And despite my best scissoring, it kept putting out green leaves. I don't know where it's coming from, but it just keeps coming. At some point, Jesus bestowed a fern onto this Hoya. I also purchased another Crimson Princess from Walmart, which was Costa Farms, but this time at peak ripeness. There was no reversion in it whatsoever, and it still hasn't put out any fully green leaves. The lesson here is don't buy plants that are partially or mostly reverted because it may be difficult to bring the plant back to its state of full variegation. Also, a fern might mysteriously grow out of it, so if you would not like that, buy plants that have all their variegation. I am so upset about this one, and by upset I mean mildly annoyed, but I'm an influencer so I have to amp up the drama. I wanted a variegated ZZ plant so bad, but the least an actual plant was going for at the time was $200. So I found a slightly variegated leaf with some stock attached to it on Mercari for $28. I started to root it. The stem started to die, but where the petiole was, where the leaf was attached to the stem, it started to callus over and grow roots. This grew out of that leaf, and that leaf subsequently died. With it went all of my dreams of a variegated ZZ plant. Lesson, even though I made a video about how to identify variegation, sometimes variegation works in mysterious ways. If you are going to buy a variegated ZZ plant leaf, maybe buy one with more variegation, or just buy a plant. Or go to Walmart, buy a standard ZZ Raven, take it to the pier, and let the seagulls poop on it. Philodendron Choco Red. I ordered this off of eBay, and it was way overpotted and had root rot. I initially didn't know it had root rot because I didn't change it out of the potting media until a few days later. However, I just decided to contact the seller anyways, and they gave me the benefit of the doubt and replaced it with another one that is larger. That one is somewhere else in the house. I don't really feel like getting it. It's featured in my last video, so if you want to see it, go watch that. I'd also like to say the philodendron choco red, out of all of my velvet leaf philodendrons, is the most susceptible to spider mites. I swear this has gotten spider mites probably like five times since I've owned it. Same with the other one. Five separate times because I don't keep them near each other because I know the spider mites will jump back and forth from one another. If I could spin this positively, I would say this plant manifests vegetal pathogens with the highest proficiency. Lesson, the first thing you do when you receive a plant, take it out of its pot and check the roots. It does not matter what the top of the plant looks like. Some of these plants can last days or weeks without roots and still look fine. Well, that's it. I need to go treat this now for the 17th time. This is Hoya Polyneira. I got them from Poland in 2020, shipped from Poland. I did not go there. No offense to Polandites. I don't really know what there is to do in Poland besides tour the post-industrial remnants of Soviet housing blocks, and to watch the veiled, silver-locked maiden till the Baltic earth in preparation for this year's Hoya bounty. These Hoyas made me so much money. These were going for literally $70 a node in 2020, and I purchased a whole basket for $80. However, the baskets were quite a bit smaller. But still, I actually have an unboxing video, so if you want to check that out, it's, it's extremely tragic. Don't go there expecting to see the same quality of content that you're getting here. I don't think that these look particularly interesting, and they are dropping in value quite a bit, so I'm going to ditch these. I personally think it's in the marketing of the name Mermaid Tail Hoya. I don't think there would be nearly as much demand without that colloquialism. I don't know. People like mythical creatures. Uh, we've been engaged for just under two years now. I mean, Mr. Tumnus is kind of cute. Lesson. I think we're over the hump as a community where home sellers can make 
a boatload of money off of just like growing rare plants in their houses. I'm not saying you can't make money, I just don't think you'll make money like I made with these. I personally wouldn't invest in any more rare plants, but that's partially because I have this channel. I feel like by the time you propagate a plant and it is sellable, it is half the value of the original plant you bought. Remember when pileas were going for $50? That, that, those days are gone. I remember last year in one of my videos asking people at the end of the video for a giveaway what they would buy instead of an obliqua. And one person said they purchased an obliqua wet node for $500 and they were happy with it. Of course, I wasn't going to rain on their parade, but look what obliqua nodes are going for these days. If they were purchasing to propagate, they had a big loss. If not, I genuinely hope they're happy with it and okay with the money that they spent. This Thanksgiving cactus was given to me by my since past great-grandmother Edna. Fun fact, it was one of the first things that she purchased for her home in Brooklyn when she emigrated here and it's going on Craigslist. Okay, that was a slight lie. I got these from Walmart a few years ago, but they still have a history to me. I have not watered this in a hot three centuries. I'm so tired of seeing these. Don't buy these. They only flower for a week and then all of the flowers drop onto the floor. And this is actually just a plug-in for all the other amazing low light cacti that exist. Get one of those. Don't buy a Thanksgiving cactus. I think even the people that named this cacti hated it. Schlumbergera? Schlumbergera? I need to check what this means because all Latin names have meanings. Named for Frederic Schlumberger, a 19th century French gardener and cacti collector. Lesson, there are so many variants of many plants that we see every day at the stores. Try and venture and look beyond what you usually see. I have a Ripsalis paradox right here, and I don't know where my Ripsalis capilliformis is right now. I'll find it. It'll be found. The genus Ripsalis contains a lot of cool species. There is Pseudo Ripsalis, if you're looking for a more disingenuous Ripsalis alternative. Epiphyllum, the rickrack cactus. Lepsium, Hetoria, Selenocereus, the list goes on. There are thousands of plant species that you can grow in your home. Don't limit yourself to what's hot in the plant community right now or what you have in the grocery store necessarily. Also, do you want a cool cactus to pass down to your hemi-cyborg Gen Z 3000 grandchildren, or do you want this? If you give them this, they might just, they just might, shoot lasers out of their eyes and send you to an early death. Sansevieria Danish Crown. I don't like most Sansevierias for some reason, but after three treks up Mount Everest in a juice cleanse, I have determined why. Most Sansevierias are upright, but also most Sansevierias have horizontal banding. And through the eyes of feng shui, it's conflicting. And it may not come as a surprise to you, but I apply no other aspects of feng shui to my lifestyle. But this one. According to Wikipedia, it is recommended you place this on top of toilet tanks in order to neutralize the drain down vibrations. This Sansevieria possesses horizontal patternation, therefore I must get rid of it. This is because I don't want my positive vibrations to be sucked down the toilet. My Danish crown has been rightfully dethroned off of my porcelain throne. Can we just appreciate the Sansevieria Bintel sensation? She is piercing through the atmosphere, scraping the heavens and skewering divine celestial beings like a holy shish kebab. Back to reality. I never really cared for this. I got it for free off of Reddit, so I took it. It's featured in a really tragic unboxing I made in 2020, like all of the tragic unboxings I made. Lesson learned, check all of your Sansevierias for your feng shui ability before you put them on your toilet. And don't just take things because they're free, because they will clutter your plant collections. And we don't have unlimited sun, most of us. Here I have some Streptocarpus. This is Streptocarpus Kigitsu and Streptocarpus Bristol's Cherry Bomb. 
as you can see, they're just about done blooming. There was a time where I purchased a lot of streptocarpus because I was very into them at the moment. I'm not that into them anymore. I still own a couple that I like, but these aren't it. I think I personally have an obsessive personality, especially when it comes to plants. If I become interested in a certain type of plant, I can't just have one. I have to have 10 of them, at least. This kind of backfires because I don't have room for 10 of every plant in my house. There are a lot of times where I've just kind of let them slowly wither away into non-existence. And for a lucky few, I kept them. My tip would be restrain yourself and limit yourself to one or a few of the plant that you're interested in, especially if they're expensive. And if you're really truly passionate about it, you can always buy more in the future. This massive, slightly sunburnt Calathea mosaica has been with me for about two years, and since then it has gone from a comparatively small 6-inch Trending Tropicals pot to this gargantuan 12-inch pot. Here's what it looked like two years ago, if you needed an example. How time flies. Recently, this has stopped growing for me because it needs to be repotted. I don't really like this plant enough to have a larger version of it. I also don't wanna to have to divide this every year to keep it under control. And in the grand scheme of houseplants and Calatheas, I don't really think it's too exciting to look at. A lot of people hype this plant up for the stained glass appearance that the leaves have under light, but the stipulation is that you can only see this, for the most part, when you are below the plant in looking up towards the light. This is no longer in a dainty, aesthetically pleasing Costa Farms pot like this is, and I can no longer hold it up to the light and see the pattern if I want to. Generally, you would put larger, more voluminous plants on the floor, and I don't really want to try and hang this up at risk of killing somebody. Therefore, it would be on the floor. And the only way you could see this desired feature is to get on the floor, pretend this is the floor, and look at it like this. Now, does this look insane or does this look ridiculous? Hey, Macarena. For me, a lot of the enjoyment that I get from plants is not just the possession of said plants, but rather watching them grow and flower and reach their biological glory. Before I move on, another reason this plant needs to go, it's getting in my light. Better. After that, I kind of get bored. For someone who's been growing plants for over 20 years, <laughs> Did you just see that? Oh my god, no! <laughs> what do I do? It's one of those roly-poly bugs. Oh, come on. It's like, I'm just gonna fall out of this. <sighs> Into my bird of paradise. Those are going back outside. Anyways. For someone who's been growing plants for over 20 years, I've purged my collection many times. A lot of us live in apartments or other areas with limited space, and I think it's always great to get rid of a few of the plants that you don't like. That's it. This felt cathartic. Make sure you go out and give some plants away. If you've liked this video and haven't already watched last year's version of it, I will link that below. Like the video if you're going to throw out your anti-feng shui matic sansevieria out the window. Subscribe if you're going to consider an alfalfa and clover burial shroud over a traditional casket. And if you want to, if you really, really appreciated this video and other videos, buy me a coffee or be a patron if you're feeling more committed. I promise all of the funds will go towards the antics you are currently witnessing. Now, if you'd excuse me, I have to get all of these plants back outside because they are riddled with insects.
This Thanksgiving cactus was given to me by my since-past great-grandmother Edna.